hope, help, and healing with a hint of humor, HashimotosHealing.com. I'm Mark Ryan, licensed acupuncturist and herbalist from HashimotosHealing.com. And welcome to part one of my free video series on how to get better results. You know, I want to share a relatively quick tip with you. Relatively quick. As many of you know, I, all I do is work with people with Hashimoto's. And I've had over 500 conversations over the last year with people in various different stages uh, of the disease. A couple months ago, uh, we were celebrating our one year anniversary and I shared uh, a number of tips that I'd learned over the years, uh, the last year working with all these people. And I think there's some really valuable insights there. And if you haven't seen that, uh, I summarized it all in a blog post on my website in the blog called Life with Hashimoto's. And over the last few months, you know, I've been focusing a lot more on the things that we can do that don't involve medication and supplements because I found that sometimes these things are really the things that can help us get to the next level and uh, can give the best results actually. And one area that I'm really fascinated by is neuroscience and what it can tell us about healing. Because this is an area of study that's really starting to bring together the mind, body, spirit approach and kind of you know, by using science, we kind of sift out what's helpful from what is maybe just like wishful thinking, you know. And I just read this fascinating book called The Emotional Life of the Brain by a man named Richard Davidson. I highly recommend it. He's a researcher and he's, for about 30 years, he's been doing a lot of interesting research on neuroscience and the brain and obviously the role of emotions and how they play a part in all of this. And one of the first things that he writes about in the book is that no two brains are alike. You know, I think we all know this, just like no two people are alike. You know, and uh, I've seen this in clinical experience, and if you've ever been to the Hashimoto's uh, or thyroid support groups, I think you can see this playing out every day. Right? Nothing works for everyone. You know, no single medication, no single supplement or group of supplements, no diet, nothing's foolproof. It, it all happens to work sometimes or not, you know. And sometimes it's in different degrees, right? This sometimes it works a little, sometimes they work great, sometimes it works for a while and then stops working, sometimes it doesn't work at all. See this playing out over and over and over again. And I, I think one of the important reasons is the different ways that people's brains are wired. And one thing the book make, makes clear is how complex this really is. And that there are all these different areas that can affect how you deal with things. I think one of the most important in dealing with Hashimoto's and the process of healing is how you deal with the challenges and adversity that you're going to come up against. Because as this progresses, you know, you'll have plenty of opportunities for failure and for disappointment. So, you know, one of the things I've realized, I've worked with a lot of people at different stages. And what's interesting is that some improve a lot and some not so much. And as someone who's had this disease myself, and I've been through a good deal of adversity, I really want to help people to get better. And, I, you know, I'm really curious about what makes the difference there. And the thing this book really helped me to see is that the reason that different people have different results is really dependent on the way that their brains are wired. Right? And there's this thing that he calls emotional style. And there are these six different categories. You know, things like how fast you recover or how resilient you are. And what your outlook tends to be. You know, are you generally positive or negative? How self-aware are you? How focused? You know? All these different things, and we all have them in different degrees and, and, and different grades. When we see it all laid out like this, oh, it starts to make sense. You know, and this is a big part of why people 
some people get better faster. Some are more resilient. Some can, you know, overcome the adversity. And, and some can overcome the obstacles more easily than others. And it's just like working about the, with the physical part of Hashimoto's. You know, there's all these different factors. So first you have to figure out what kind of where you are in that spectrum. And that gives you a better sense of where to focus. You know, because if you have trouble uh, being resilient, you have if you're recovering, you know, that, that may be an area that you need to work on more to help you get better. So I, I'm not going to go into all the detail of it in this video, but I just want you to think about that and realize that there are a number of different reasons why your brain wiring may prevent you from getting some of the results you want. And as you begin to figure out what your tendencies are, you know, what's really unique to you, I think there are a few general truths that can be really helpful. And that's what I want to focus on today. The first one I think has to do with learning. Right, because one of the important things with Hashimoto's is that we often have to learn how to do things differently, and relearning involves changing your behavior. You know, I can get some great advice about things I need to do, but if I don't do them, then I haven't really learned anything. You know, I think a perfect example of this is like the alcoholic, right? An alcoholic, hopefully at some point, knows he or she needs to stop drinking. You know, for most of them, if it's bad, it becomes pretty obvious. They have to have that self-awareness. They have to be able to recognize it. They have to admit it. And eventually, they have to make some change. And one of the best tools, obviously, for making change is Alcoholics Anonymous. Right? Because AA is a program that's devoted entirely to changing behavior. It's a system for learning new behavior. And people that are successful, the ones that, that stay sober, are the ones who really learned how to live life differently. I think the same is true with Hashimoto's in many respects. Right? You have to be able to learn how to live life differently. And this means learning to change your behavior. Around a lot of different things. Right? There's things like gluten and sugar. You know, those are issues that can cause problems also about thinking and language, the way we talk. You know, this, this is an area where some behavior may need changing too. You have to think about it. How you speak to others and yourself about your Hashimoto's can really make a big difference. How do you identify yourself? You know, do you say, I'm a Hashis? Well, stop for a second. If you use that language, you know, Think about that. It means you might be really identifying strongly with the disease. Now, I don't like using the word Hashis. Because to me, it's too cute. You know, I don't want to get that close to it. I always like to use Hashimoto's because it's a little more clinical. I like to distance myself from it. You know, I have Hashimoto's. Or even better, I think is I'm working on getting Hashimoto's in remission. You know, I like to talk about that a lot. I like to repeat that to myself over and over because that's my goal. That's my focus. And rem in remission is somewhere over there. It's outside of me. And that's where I want it. And sometimes people will use kind of all or nothing language too. Like, I'll never lose a pound. Even if I live on salary. Or I'm always tired. Nothing helps. I've tried everything. Spent thousands of dollars. Nothing worked. Well, talking like this really wires your brain like that. It creates neural pathways. And you re when you repeat them over and over again, that's where you end up returning. And that becomes your default thought. And that's what you keep saying. And when that becomes your default thought, then that becomes your reality. So, even if you're frustrated and even if you're not happy with where you are, I think it's really important to think about how you express it. You know, I'm, I'm not where I'd like to be yet. It's a better way to talk about it, because in that is a grain of hope, and in that is a possibility. Because it won't get better if you don't change your relationship to it. And I guarantee you there's something that is better.
example. You know, another thing I, I really like to do, it's a very simple thing, uh, is to make a gratitude list. You know, think about what you have, think about what you're grateful for. In that, you'll find something. And last thing I think it's really important to, to think about is stress. You know, because everybody knows that stress is not good. And with Hashimoto's, we have layer upon layer of stress. And virtually everyone that I've spoken to reported some major stressful event prior to really getting sick or to really being pushed over into autoimmunity. That, that was true of me. And we have all, all this physiological stress, right, from autoimmune disease. And it puts a lot of stress on our body. So in a way, we have a much lower threshold for it. And then we release too much cortisol, this can actually damage our body and our brain. And Hashimoto's itself is, at its root, a disease of inflammation. And there are many inflammatory markers, like plasma, fibrinogen, that rise during stressful events. Stress is a major trigger to autoimmunity. And in terms of the brain, all these different emotions play a big role in impacting your immune system. Some neurons in the brain called sympathetic fibers connect all the way to the thymus and the lymph nodes. So by activating these neurons with positive emotions like joy and happiness and enthusiasm and silliness and fun, has been shown to actually modulate endocrine and immune systems. Well, that's our wheelhouse. So, how your brain is wired can really have a big impact on healing. And what's also really interesting about this is, it's not just a one-way thing. You know, what happens in your brain affects your body. And what happens in your body affects your brain. It goes both ways. So, in my next video, I want to share with you how Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism actually affect the brain, and especially the neurotransmitters that are responsible for these positive emotions. You can see how this is all connected. Because we can change our behavior, and we can affect our emotions. It's very possible. We have the technology. I'm Mark Ryan, licensed acupuncturist and herbalist. Hashimoto'sHealing.com. Be good, be kind, and remember to have compassion and fun with everyone, including yourself. Hashimoto'sHealing.com.